Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. April showers does not bring Mayflowers, at least not to the Prescott area. It has been April snow brings cold weather and rain to the Prescott area so far in the month of April. But anyways, uh, I was just trying something different for the intro. Uh, Roadhouse. Anyways, like oh, you like it? Does that work, Mike? Yeah, Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Anyways, here we go. Real Film Nerds episode number, I didn't look it up, 330. Are you looking at me? Uh, yeah, I'm looking right at you. Nothing. I'm looking. Hold on. I'm using Got the internet. 367. Again. I almost said 37. 367. The they're not calling it a remake. They're calling it a reimagining Roadhouse 2024. It is spelled the same, two separate words. Um, anyways, uh, Mysterious Mike Talent, uh, how's life? Oh, things are all right, man. Very busy. It seems like April's bringing uh, maybe not uh, flowers, but uh, busyness. Mike, why are you so busy? Uh, just got a lot of things going on with uh, work and, and trying to grow grass and, you know, just various other things. Is that slang for marijuana? No, no, literally Bahia grass. Bahia grass? Yeah, that's a style, like a kind, a type. God, you're old. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're going to start talking about Scott's, you know, turf guard and... You oh know. yes, Scott's. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, Scott's. Uh, that's gonna be on there. Weed and feed, baby. So, so you got new. You you're building a new lawn on your property. Is that what it is? You're yanking it all out and putting it down. New stuff or what's no, going on? No, no, no. What, what what's going on, Matt? Is uh, I ha have some weeds or a lot of weeds, and I'm trying to fill in all the. Uh, patched areas with actual grass and then i'm gonna have to try and get rid of the weeds so oh okay all right so you remember in arizona we don't have those things we have weeds we don't have grass yeah yeah you have weeds uh you know like y your monsoon was it was it good this last year or no it, was it wasn't super great this year no. oh, okay yeah yeah but but a year before, didn't you have to like mow the lawn like three times? It was terrifying. Oh, oh yeah, dude. Well, I had to this past year. I only had to mow the weeds like twice, but the year before, I had to mow like once a once every like two or three weeks. There was a lot of a lot of weeds, and they just kept coming and coming and coming. And I try and keep them down. They don't go away. I just cut them down to about an inch or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I gotcha. Hope you. not to throw too many rocks. Yeah, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So you know, kind of like that. But different, you know. Okay, grown, so gr grown grass, but not I, the marijuana I've, kind. Not the marijuana grass. Not the the smoky smoke grass. I mean, I guess you could smoke that grass. It just probably isn't going to do much for you. Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't know. Is it is it kind of like uh, you know you can milk anything with tits? That's true, and, and it's not tits, nipples. <laughs> nipples, yeah. Because <laughs> I don't have tits, but you can milk me. <laughs> All right, dude. Right? Uh, that's right. I can milk you. That's from... Um, meet the Parents. Meet the Parents, yeah. I almost said uh, Family Matters, but no, Meet <laughs> the Parents, yeah. I've got nipples, Greg. <laughs> can you milk me? <laughs> See, I can get the line. I can't remember the damn movie. <laughs> well, there God, you go. Getting old sucks. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so, yeah, Mike, I have also been incredibly busy uh, from trips to Vegas to trips to Phoenix to trips to People's Valley to uh, trying to sell houses, trying to answer questions. Uh, I'm not here to talk about the chaos that is my life. I'm here to talk about movies and the podcast. But, yeah, it's been hell for me as well. So uh, hopefully things will uh, get better. But uh, only time will tell, right? That's right, Matt. So let's do this. What is this? 360, what'd you say, seven? Yeah, I, uh, 367. I freaking closed the website, but All right. yes. 367 it Nerds. is. Episode number 367, Roadhouse 2024, Imagine Reimagining. I just almost said imagination. No, Reimagining of Roadhouse starring Jake Gyllenhaal. Mike, give us a breakdown. Ready on your marks. Get set. 
Roadhouse. Roadhouse. All right. Directed by Doug Lyman. Uh, it's written by Anthony uh, Bagarzoe. Uh, Bag- uh, Bagazoe? <laughs> oh, man. I messed that one up. Dude, dude you're sounding out as horrible. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to go with uh, Bagarozi. Bagarozi. That's what I'm going with. Chuck uh, Mandry, R. Lace Hill. Mandry? That's a. Oh, dude, you are butching this bad. Uh, please tell me you can say R. Lance Hill. Chuck Mondry. R. R. Lance. Uh, yeah, R. Lance Hill. I got that one. That one's that okay. one's easy. That's yeah. And then uh, Hillary uh, Hinkin. All right, uh, this movie is starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Daniela uh, Mel Melcher, uh, Conor McGregor, uh, Billy Magnuson, uh, Jessica Williams. Oh, and I, I guess uh, Post Malone. Shows up in a lot of movies. And uh, ex-UFC fighter Dalton takes a job as a bouncer at a Florida Keys roadhouse, only to discover this paradise is not all it seems. There's a lot more bigger names in there, but yeah, I mean, dude, Post Malone only had that one scene. I thought he had more than that, but it was only the one scene. Yeah, but I mean, he was in. He's he's been in a lot of movies, dude. He's in a bunch of stuff. Yeah, he he clearly wants to be like a movie star. Yeah, so I don't know. I was I was surprised to see him in it. I I didn't know he was in it. But well, dude. But there was a uh, JD Pardo. I like JD Pardo. He's a very good actor. He's from uh, the Mayans, and he was also in the Twilight series. <laughs> yes, I do know that. <laughs> oh, 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 all right. Hmm, Matt knows his um, Twilights. I, you know, I love my Twilights, Mike. You know, I had to watch all those fucking things in the theater, except for the last one. Um, Joaquim de Almedia, he is a very well-known actor, uh, mostly for, like, bit parts. But, come on, you recognized him. He was in Fast Five, Desperado, Clear and Present Danger, oh, yeah. Behind Enemy Lines. No, for sure. I recognized him. But I was just trying to throw out a few. I didn't want to overwhelm our listeners. I, I'm trying to overwhelm. Okay, you overwhelmed, dude. All right. Okay, Mike, so um, was this my pick or your pick? I, I think it was my pick. I was, it was really your excited pick. to watch this. It was your yeah. pick. Yeah. How, um, how, how is your excited level now? Mediocre at best. Okay. All right. I I don't know. It was, it was just okay. Yeah, dude, this movie's rough. Just come out with it, Mike. I'm saying it. Mediocre at best. It was right. rough. There's parts that I really enjoyed. There's parts that I did not enjoy. There's a lot of forced humor. Did you feel that? Um, I don't know about that, but I felt like there was a lot of unnecessary things in this movie. Like, um, I don't know, all man. The, it, it, what? All the male nudity? No, no, I, no. I thought that was fine. No, the the <laughs> the um. Well, I mean, I don't want to get into too many spoilers, but like, okay. just uh, don't don't then. You can do it, Mike. You can talk about this movie without spoiling it. Okay, I I'm going to. Uh, I just thought the story's not, yeah, uh, you know, the story's not terrible. I think the execution of the story wasn't very good, and there was a lot of things that were done like weird experimental camera stuff. I feel like and like. That's cool, but this wasn't really the movie to do that. I, I, I don't know, man. Like, I just felt like there was a lot of unnecessary stuff. Some of the acting with some of the actors was awful. Like, just, I mean, I could have done it, man. I can read lines. Like, no, just, you can't. Just stand we, there. You well, just tried, Mike, I, well, you just tried to read names. I just can't spell. You can't, you can't read lines. You can't read names. Come on. I, I could read um, mm-hmm. um, I, I, I don't know, man. Like there was, I don't know about forced humor, but like there was, there was aspects of the movie that like I kind of liked and it could have been okay, but like, it just seems like there was too much CGI. There was just weird things. I'm sure there's even more CGI than I know just, but I feel like a lot of the camera stuff was really weird, Matt. Like, I don't know. It bothered me. I liked some of the camera stuff, but okay, let me explain the forced humor. There's just, if you 
turn on the captions, which I did for some of it because I have a hard time with accents. You know that. I've talked about that many times. But there's some forced like lines that are they're trying to be like funny and it just kind of falls flat. A lot of it. There's probably at least three or four dozen lines where they're trying to like be funny or tell a joke and it just falls flat. Okay, okay. All, how's this? All right, go. There is the young Mexican gentleman. Uh, his name is Mo. His character's name is Mo, but he's played by Arturo Castro. He gets his arm broken and then he just randomly like keeps popping up and Jake Gyllenhaal like blatantly like murders a guy and he's just like, oh, hey, man. Oh, yeah. That was just you awkward. Know, well, yeah, but that's the thing. It's trying to be funny and it just fell flat. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah you're right. Um, the, the, I don't know, the romance in this or love interest. I mean, it kind of had a part in it, but like he really didn't need it. Yeah, um, but not like the first one. And they were trying to copycat the first one very much in that way. She was a doctor. You know, they even had the scene where she was like sewing him up, you know, straight out of the original. Yeah. But there's no sex scene. There's no nudity, at least female nudity. I, I was disappointed. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know, man. It just was. There were aspects that I liked, but there were other parts that I didn't. Um, I have been to the Keys several times, and I'm pretty sure they made up this key because I didn't, I didn't understand where it was at. Oh, of course they did. Of course they did, man. They couldn't say it was like an actual key because then everybody would be like flocking to it. Yeah. But yeah, Mike, you want to inform our listeners on why you've been to the Keys so many times in your in your life? Well, okay, let's say this, your past life, because we know uh, the instant you had a family and children's, your past life has uh, gone away a little bit. Is dwindled, man. Is dwindled. Uh, I, well, it's your I, hobby. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I love uh, going scuba diving, so I've been down to the Keys several times. So um, they got the Keys feeling kind of right. Um, it is definitely kind of a like, small town, small, like, people know stuff about what's going on. It's it's not big. It's not big. Yeah, just, I agree. Yeah. And that's one of the problems I had with it is how full the freaking bar is all the time with <laughs> random people. And they're all fighting like all the time. That was not believable at all to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was also all these music acts, which I'm not entirely saying there's not lots of musical acts in the keys, but I'm just saying like, why would they keep coming to this place? And like, what? How? I don't know. Just there's strange, strange things, man. That's one of the positives, though, for this film is the music. The music was pretty dang good i i don't know if i liked all the covers especially at the end which we'll get to in a minute but the music overall i think was very good in the film i enjoyed it okay yeah um <laughs> the uh well all right i i i think man i it just could have been a lot more there was a lot of potential to this movie matt there were some good actors and the story's not a bad story. I just feel like execution was a little bit poor. I agree. Do you, so, okay, I don't know if I want to get into this before or after we get into the, our spoiler section, but uh, Mike, do you think it was justified for it to be only on streaming, or do you think this should have come out in the theaters? I don't know. It's hard to say, Matt. Hard to say. I feel like it would have been fun in the theaters. I mean, it's kind of a ridiculous movie. There are aspects like there's almost like a a character in this movie who's like um like a cartoon. Like he just seems larger than life and just unbelievably ridiculous. You you know which guy I'm talking about? The 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 enforcer dude, Knox. Are you talking about Conor McGregor? Yeah, Conor McGregor. Dude, his yeah. character was, I don't know, dude, pretty pretty ridiculous. I, yeah, and not... I think that was one of the better parts of the film was his character. Okay. All right. Well, I, I, guess, uh, I, I guess I need to hear more about that, Matt. So I'm going to ask you, what are you drinking this fine morning, evening, afternoon? Ah. <sighs> Well, Mike, thanks for asking. I am drinking a big blue van for the roadhouse. Oh, dude, nice. Very nice. 
Uh, so uh, I'm I'm drinking not an IPA, man. I'm drinking a Yingling. A Yingling? Wow, dude! Yeah, I don't know a, if you've ever lager. had that on this podcast. Yeah, I don't think I have. Just just having a nice lager, Yingling. Yeah, that's a first. I mean, I thought you were going to say margarita again because you had margaritas last week. I did. It was tasty. So, all right, Mike. Well, speaking of, uh, I don't know, tasty jokes. Huh? Oh, hey. What is this week's incredible dad joke? I got dad jokes. I don't think they understand, though. Gotta think I'm funny. Other people never laugh, though. Dad jokes. All right, Matt. Um... Why did the coffee refuse to go to the roadhouse? Because it didn't want to be swayze Because it didn't want to be mugged. Good job. Ah! <laughs> Mine was funnier. No. Yeah, well, yours is, yeah. I, I was just thinking the original roadhouse, you know. Good old Patrick Swayze, who yeah. you know, Mike, has ties to Prescott Valley. Does he really? You don't know the story? No, no. Why don't you uh, let the listeners hear in on this? Okay, so... This happened before I moved out here and was working for the Courier. Like, this was late 90s, early 2000s, I think. Patrick Swayze was flying one of his private planes because, you know, he was a pilot. Correct? Oh, okay. I didn't know he was a you pilot. You didn't know that? Okay. Now I do. Well, he crashed in Prescott Valley. Oh, that's awesome. And so, um, this is all hearsay. These are all rumors. There's no confirmed facts, but this is what I heard from the photographer that showed up on scene. So a photographer I worked with at the Courier uh, found out about it, heard about it. All the tabloids were calling going, like, is this true? Is this true? He went back to work, clocked out, drove over there, got pictures of his plane, got pictures of all this stuff. Didn't get Swayze, but uh, sold him all to the tabloids, made a buttload of money. The paper was not happy because he went and <laughs> clocked out. So he made all this money. But... um. The story goes, again, story, there's probably truth in this. I don't know. Patrick Swayze crashed. He was shit-faced. He climbs out of the plane, and they're building like a subdivision area. It's over in that kind of part of Prescott Valley back in then. And uh, there's construction workers out there. He gives the construction workers bottles of wine and beer or whatever he had in the plane to give him a ride to town. Patrick Swayze goes to town, goes to the Prescottonian, which is the best Western across from Yavapai College, uh, goes there and gets a hotel room and passes out drunk. Cops come by later finding out who it is because it's all registered. Everybody knows. And they come by later, knock on the door, try and you know, get him for like flying drunk kind of thing. But at that point, he had sobered up, so they didn't have any proof. <laughs> and he'd gotten rid of everything in, in, in his uh, plane. Correct. He he gave it all away. Uh, I think there were maybe some empty beer cans and stuff, but uh, uh, yeah, that's the that's the way the story goes, Mike. Well, that's an interesting story, dude. I like that story, even if it's a story. That's fun. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Patrick Swayze has ties to Prescott Valley. So yeah, that was that was fun. And like I said, it was the uh, the late '90s, early 2000s. It was before I moved here, but uh, yeah, people still to this day talk about it because I mean, he's a bit. He was a big deal. Patrick Swayze's awesome. Yeah, and there's a tie right there. Is that uh, I was watching an interview earlier with um, Jake Gyllenhaal. You know, Patrick Swayze was in one of Jake Gyllenhaal's very first films, uh, Donnie Darko, one of my favorite films. Oh, oh well, yeah, okay. So uh, Jake Gyllenhaal was talking about that a little bit on uh, one of the interviews I was watching. But anyways, Mike, I digress. Uh, how does Roadhouse 2024 relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? All right, Matt, as, as you uh, were uh, talking about... Um, Mr. Jake Gyllenhaal was in uh, Spider-Man Far From Home as uh, Mysterio uh, or uh, Quentin Beck. Good job, Mike. You did it. The easy one. I know you like the easy ones. I do like the easy ones. And uh, I, I like having an easy one. So, so now, Matt, we can start spoiling it. But, Mike... I have something easy for our listeners. 
Oh, what do you have, Matt? Mike, we have another glorious giveaway on the Real Filmers podcast. Ooh, what do we got, Matt? So this is a film that is out on Paramount+. Plus. But for those of you who do not have Paramount Plus and you can't watch this anywhere else, we have a way of you being able to get a digital download of this film. It is the latest film starring Tommy Lee Jones, uh, Ben Foster, Toby Wallace, and Jenna Ortega called Finest Kind. Oh, Finest Kind. I think... uh, What? I'm pretty sure you've seen the trailers for this. Yeah, I think I've seen the trailer. Yes. So anyways, Mike, um, what should our gracious listeners that want to have a free copy of this do to enter our contest? Remember, they got to email you, Mike at RealFilmNerds.com. That's M-I-K-E at RealFilmNerds.com. He also loves your dick pics as well. Whoa, Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. (laughs) Not that that second part. Not that second part. Let's just email, uh, email Mike. Finest kind. Just tell me the name of the movie. The name of the movie? That's lame. No, you you don't like that. No, that's lame. I was th- I was gonna say something with your uh most like the most obscure uh uh Ben Foster film you can name. How's that? Most obscure. you don't even know who Ben Foster is, do you? No, no. I'm trying to think. I'm a I'm a I'm a bad person. I I, I can see it on your eyes. Jesus, Mike. He was in Lone Survivor. Ben He was Foster. in um that one movie. Oh yeah. Uh Survive Survival, I think. Oh yeah. Where yeah. Was him and his uh well not his real daughter, but his daughter in the film. They're survivalists. Okay. There's Hell or High Water. Yeah. He was in Hell or High Water. Three ten to Yuma? He was yep. He was the, the uh, one the of the villains in he was one of the villains in 310 to Yuma. Yeah. So, see, I was going to say, like, name a, another Ben Foster movie. Oh, all right. Well, there we go. It doesn't matter. Do what you want. You could even just send Mike, you know, a glorious picture. Yes. And you will be guaranteed to win. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, that's terrible. That's terrible. If you send Mike uh, graphic nudie images, I will let him, you know, deal with the consequences f- from him. Yes. Okay. I don't know. All right. Yep. That fell apart, Matt. So it why did. don't you- It did. Why, I'm sorry. Yeah. Why, why don't you get to the business, Matt? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Finest Kind is available to buy on digital today, starring Ben Foster, Toby Wallace, with Jenna Ortega and Tommy Lee Jones. Two brothers reunited under desperate circumstances are forced into business with a dangerous Boston crime syndicate, putting their family ties to the test. It is directed by Brian Hegeland. Finest kind. Get it from Fandango at home now. It is rated R. And again, it's from our good friends over at Paramount Pictures. All right. Well, all right, Matt. You ready? You ready for this? Spoiler section for Roadhouse 2024. Mike, I know you're itching. Ready, set, go. All right. So me and Mags watched this movie, man. And you subjected Mags to this? Yeah. You bastard. Well, you know, uh, we could watch it at home, so we watched it anyway. Matt, when they when they start the f- like the foreshadowing of the crocodile and like immediately Mags like oh somebody's gonna get eaten, of course and and yeah. like that part was terrible, dude. The like the CG was bad and like I don't know unnecessary. I felt like I didn't really add to the story and it got things to be kind of real dark real quick. I don't know, dude. That was. Well, it- and J.D. Pardo is a pretty big actor, and he was one of the better actors in this film, and they wiped him out pretty dang quick. They did. They did. And and the the, 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 the acting of, uh, like, the lady who played uh, Frankie, uh, Jessica Williams. Yeah, dude. Jessica Williams was awful. That and was And you know what's really bad. sad is, so Jessica Williams, what, what I know her from is she was a correspondent on The Daily Show for a long time. And so she's a comedian. That's what she's known for. And they had her do like this serious, serious role. And it was just 
it was just awful. Yeah, dude. It was just really flat. Like, that was like, for me to notice is really bad. <laughs> so, um, anyway, it was, uh, I don't know. There was like an unnecessary use of CG, Matt. Like, the boat running into the bar. Yeah, that was just kind of stupid. Y- the those boats turn on a dime. I mean, yeah, they would have flown off, but you could have turned the boat, no problem. Like, it, it just, it, it was, uh, there's just dumb, dumb decisions. Like, uh, it, it was, I don't know. Like, there are aspects of the movie, but this is a little weird. Like, the movie is even kind of like, I don't know, is this being meta where, like, he was in the bookshop and the, the um, young uh, lady in there is talking about westerns, and then this movie's kind of like a western, like in a lot of ways. It's kind of like, um, to me, it was kind of like a Clint Eastwood movie, like a Pale Rider, except everybody knew his name. In Pale Rider, no one knows his name. Right. But, like, it was kind of like that. Like, a guy kind of shows up and, like, helps the town defend from the bad people who keep kind of like showing up, which is also weird. Yeah, dude, but that's very much akin to the original. I don't want to compare the two films because they're different and similar in a lot of ways, but mostly different. At least in the first film, you know, Dalton, uh, he's this hired bouncer to come and fix this place. They went to New York City to get him didn't realize that he's like well off and well to do and all this money and all this stuff, but he tries to downplay his card to try and be like one of them. There's the big bad that's running the whole thing. And that's the satisfying ending is the big bad just gets, you know, it's like a, like a video game, you know, you're working your way up. Uh, the original one had a monster truck where they drove through like a, a, uh, a car dealership. I mean, there was just a lot of things that kept building and building and building on the original one where this one, like the death of the big bad boss was like lackluster. It was just annoying. The fight between uh, Knox and uh, Dalton was great. I really liked that. I thought it was really well or- orchestrated and great, but um, it still kind of left it left you know, wanting more. And then at the end, I don't know if you watched all the way through the credits, Mike, but there's a, mid credit scene where you find out that Knox didn't die. He's like escaping out of a hospital. Oh, no, no. I I think I turned it off. Um the uh the, I don't know. The the Knox character was just kind of ridiculous. Like he was just uh, I don't know. Just this crazy kind of amped up character. Yeah, I thought it was uh, great. Uh, yeah, he, he was I don't it was know. It's ridiculous. Man. He's like banging out some dude's chick. That's when you first meet him. He's falling out of the window, butt ass naked, and just has this weird ass strut. Like, where did that strut come from? Like, he uh, had that strut every single time you saw him. I don't know, dude. I don't know. But um, I liked it. I, I, I like the, the UFC. I, I like the UFC tie-in that he was like a uh, fighter who things like went bad and like that. I mean, that that was kind of cool. Like. And he's he's messed up from that, it, you know. He's he's real poor, like, uh, you know that that was interesting. But like this roadhouse, that was another thing that was totally ridiculous, Matt. Besides the the bands and where all these people are coming from, I get it's the keys, but like I I don't know. Um, but yeah, was Mike. was why did she have five k to give you know Dalton every week? Like, it just didn't seem like the bar was making that much money. It seemed like there were a lot of people there, but all the shit that kept breaking. But I have a problem with it being called a roadhouse, because you wouldn't have called it a roadhouse on the keys. It would have been something island-themed. Like, the original film is, like, a bar literally, like, on the side of a road. Like, it makes a lot more sense. Like, when I see this, I think Tiki Bar. You know, that's what it looks like, with all the palm fronds and everything. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know, man. So like it, uh, it had aspects like that. Were, like the people were all nice to him, and like they were bringing him f- food, and like he was living on this like broken down boat. Like that stuff was cool. Like, but I, I, I don't know, man. It was just. You just, know what it is? It doesn't have the heart that the first one has, that the yeah. original has. The original has a lot of heart. 
Patrick Swayze is trying to help the community, trying to help the old man that he's written a building from. You know, he's trying to save these people. And in this one, it's just about the bar. And it's like they tried to have some heart in it with that uh, young girl and the bookshop, which I thought was really odd. And it just didn't have really a place. And the acting by her was atrocious. That was really bad. I really had a hard time watching the scenes with the young girl. Not to, you know, throw her under the bus, but I mean, it just was not good. It was not good at all. Yeah, I mean, that was, to me, that stuff was fine. But like, I don't know, like we just didn't get that. I I think you're right. We just didn't have that heart to, I I did enjoy how um, Jake Gyllenhaal's character is like, uh, very meticulous about how he's like he knows he everybody he's gonna be able to take down really easily. I did enjoy that he was just like he would tell him stuff like, "Hey, do you have coverage before we do this?" Like, like I I thought that stuff was fun. Like, yeah, but, yeah. But uh, this, some of the 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 camera work and like some of the bar fighting scenes was weird, dude. Like the like kind of fisheye, like almost like transitioning between people. I don't know, dude. Like that was weird to me. It was a little you bit off putting. You didn't like the getting hit in the face cam. No, that one was fine. But like, <laughs> um, yeah. How did you like that, Matt? You like that shaky cam, dude? I I thought it was kind of fun. You know, you got the first person shooter is like Conor McGregor sitting there pounding on Jake Gyllenhaal's face. I thought that was interesting. I I, I liked it. I thought it was cool. All right. I I don't know the 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 weird wide angle like lens or whatever shots that they had. I I don't. I just didn't think they worked very well for it. I don't know. It's no John Wick. Well. You know, like Extraction, they had some of that camera stuff where it was kind of like going in and out of stuff and kind of transitioning, I guess. And I, I think some of that CG, like where they're pasting stuff, like, remember there was like, or maybe they had a drone that like flew through the cab or something. Yeah, I think it was a drone, but it doesn't yep. matter. I know what you're trying to say. Yeah, yeah, like eh, that made more sense and flowed better. I just didn't feel like the flow of this like camera work was... I don't know. It was distracting to me. Like, distracting. Here you go. I got another one for you. So, the big boss is young. He's not experienced. He has a boat, but he's not really that scary. Uh, Ben Brandt. But yet, his father is the scary one, which you never even hear his voice or see him. He, you just know he's in prison, and he sends Conor McGregor to go clean up. And then Conor McGregor's so crazy and insane, he ends up being the one that actually kills the big boss in the film in a very lackluster way. He just snaps his neck, and it's just like, that's it? Movie over? Really? Okay. Yeah, that, dude. It, it, I don't know, dude. It was weird. Like, in the boss, like, he kept sending the same people to get beat up. Like, this is like, what? Like, I don't know, man. This is weird. I, I get it. I get it, Mike. I, I Like, like the, like, uh, oh, I also didn't like the speed-up scenes, dude. Speed-up scenes. Where they, like, made it go faster. Like, uh, when he's getting hit by the car, they, like, fast-forwarded the, the, the film Oh, it's, are you talking about the pickup truck where he backs yeah, into him? Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of that's that definitely was CGI. It had to be because that was kind of weird. And I didn't even catch that it was uh JD Pardo driving the truck. I thought it was some random drunk person, which is what they were trying to make it look like, but it wasn't. Yeah, but like that seemed weird. They like sped that up. I don't know, dude. It just eh. I don't know. I really the, the, didn't like that they put the croc there killing a uh, thing. Like, crocs wouldn't do that. I mean, uh, oh, sure, every once in a while, maybe a croc would attack a person, but they're not, like, waiting to attack a person. Well, and then there was the uh, guy that was, like, the the owner of the docks or whatever. You see him twice, and they talk about him more than you actually see him. He doesn't even have a name. He's just some weird dude with a hat on. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. He was the harbinger of the crocodile. He he was. He was. But yeah. not going to find that body. They hide right. their And then food. everyone and their mom says that same line. Oh, well, you're never going to find the body because crocs hide their food or whatever. Like, dude. 
everybody kept saying that line. It's like we fucking get it. You can you said it three times. I I yeah, dude. I I don't know, man. There was just weird stuff in the movie, man. Just weird stuff. Like and, no, the, go ahead. the the scene that's supposed to establish kind of uh I don't know, maybe a, like a date with Jake Gyllenhaal and his uh, kind of love interest. It just seemed weird, dude. Like, it seemed forced and that, I don't know. They just didn't really seem like they had any chemistry. No, definitely not. And if they did, they didn't, they didn't uh, uh, exploit it. That's for sure. Yeah. No, I, I don't know, man. Like, some of the fight scenes were kind of cool. Like, some of the stuff was really neat, but I don't know. Just, um, just weird. Could have been good. I, I saw the potential, man. I saw the potential. It just didn't come together. Okay, well, Mike... Uh, you know what? Okay. All right. There's one last one I'm going to talk about before we give our ratings. Okay. So in, in the original Roadhouse, like Dalton shows up and he, they kind of showed it a little bit in this one where he's just sitting at the bar and letting the bouncers do their work. And that's what he's kind of there is to get them to the point where he is on how to do things and like teach them and yeah, you know, he's teaching all that. Yeah. yeah. Right. The guys that they had playing bouncers in this film in no way, shape, or form should have been cast as bouncers. They did not look like bouncers at all. They look like surfer kids. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once I mean, it, it, it tried to have that a little bit where he kind of taught them, but like it, it was like the one guy. All he did is ask him if he boxed, and like that was it. That I mean, there might have been more, but it got cut out. You know, like all we saw was, I don't know. It just didn't seem. Seem like one there. There's one scene where he gives advice to the thing. He's like, ah, if he swings at you, just just do a, you know, a, uh, no. If he pulls a knife, yeah. If he pulls a knife, just do this. Like punch a him solid, in the face, yeah, or yeah, something. Like yeah, punch yeah. him as hard as you can in the face, or something like that. Yeah, straight straight punch or something. I don't know. Yeah, but like that was it. That was like his mentoring. Like, all right, there you go. I'm just gonna sit here and drink my. Uh, Cuban coffee or whatever it was. Right. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I, I, I'm just going to sum it up with the film had a lot of potential. It had some things I really did like, some things I didn't like so much, but um, overall it's missing a lot of heart. But uh, I know I still had a good time. I still enjoyed myself, but I think it could have been better by far. And I'm sure my rating is higher than yours, Mike, just because I, you're, you're just tearing it apart. So... I want to know what you rate this film, Mike. How how many reels do you give Roadhouse twenty twenty four? Oh man, I'm gonna give it two and a half reels. I just I just had a rough time. Like there are aspects that were kind of fun, but it was just kind of silly, and I, I, I don't know. It just seemed like there's a lot of parts that weren't functioning together. Okay, I don't feel so bad now. I really thought you were gonna give it like a one, a two and a oh, half. Like that's yeah. that's not bad for you. Okay. All right. What, well, what are you giving it, dude? One and a half? What do you no, do? No, no. For Three? new Mike, for new Mike, like that's not that's bad for new Mike. For you know, Mike like three, four years ago, podcast years ago, you know, two and a half was a good score. But uh gotcha. no, I, I beat you. I beat you just a smidgen. I give it a three. I think this film is just average. I don't okay. think it's anything special. There's a lot of things I liked. Like you didn't like Knox. I thought Knox was fantastic. I thought Conor McGregor needs to work on acting, but uh, overall, I enjoyed it. Um, him, I enjoyed uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's Dalton. I wish there were some things, um, but there's a lot of things that are missing, including acting, including heart, including uh, female nudity. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing that in there. Well, dude, the girl that is with Patrick Swayze in the original one, I mean, dude, she's full on like nude in that film. It's amazing. Oh, and you know the other thing it's missing? Monster like, trucks. What is, huh? Monster trucks? Close. Monster trucks is another one. But Mike, the biggest part of all that sets all the roadhouse from all other films ever before and after. No one got their throat ripped out. Oh yeah. That's true. 
No one got their throat ripped out. But the one guy did get his throat punched in. He did, yeah. And I, th- I figure that's kind of what them trying to be safe was like, oh, we'll just have him have his, you know, throat crushed. It yeah. won't be removed. It'll just be crushed. Yeah, and he'll just he'll just uh, ch- ch- choke by not being able to breathe. Yeah, that's fine. That's a way nicer way. I, I just remember that watching the original Roadhouse as a kid, and I'm like, did he just seriously rip that dude's throat <laughs> out? I'm like, you can do that? That's a thing? I don't think you can, but it was definitely got my mind cooking when I was a 12-year-old. <laughs> yep. Matt's like, ooh. Where do I learn how to do that? What taekwondo class teaches that? Yeah. Uh, it's horrible. That's horrible. Now you uh, got to take Muay Thai. What? Muay Thai? Is that what it is? Muay Thai? Yeah. yeah Probably well, one of those. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure it's possibly taught. I don't know, but it was pretty it was pretty brutal in that film, but You know, you know what they should have done? I mean, this might have been a pain in the ass, but they should have given Jake Gyllenhaal a cauliflower ear. Well, Conor McGregor has it for sure. Well, yeah, dude, well, he's a real fight. He was, you know, he was a UFC fighter. Oh, yeah, dude, that that shit never goes away either. I've I have no. photographed and met a lot of uh uh wrestling coaches over the years and it, that shit's for life yeah it's like a telltale t- sign of someone who who wrestled typically well, a lot of, yeah yep. yep uh but anyways all right mike so next week we're gonna review a film that you, is one of your picks i'm excited to see it too i think it'll be fun uh what are we gonna chat about uh next week mike dude we're gonna watch monkey man it looks like uh, India's John Wick, and it looks awesome. Revenge, lots of martial arts. Um, dude, it just looks like fun. Uh, I think Jordan Peele like, helped uh, bring this to America and like get it across the finish line because it was having a hard time finding somebody to release it and stuff like that. And Bam. Now we got it. The thing that floors me is the uh, star. Th- so he's the director the writer, one of the writers and the star of the film, Dev Patel, is the martial artist in it. And I never would have thought of him as a martial artist because of the roles that he's not so much been typecasted, but he's always been kind of the the smart, kind of nerdy, like well put together, well read guy in all the films that he's been in. Not the martial artist, not the badass, you know? But uh he's the badass in this film, and I'm looking at the trivia on IMDB. And it says uh, Dev Patel began training in Taekwondo when he was 10 years old. He earned his first Dan Black Belt in March of 2006 at the age of 16. So, dude, he's got the chops, man. He's got the chops. Yeah, man. I think I think this is going to be uh, a fun movie to watch, and uh, it, it's going to be interesting. So, uh, it has to be better than Roadhouse 2024, right? Yeah. No, I mean, all it has to do is bring a little heart. And I think this movie has a lot of heart. I think it does. At least the trailer makes it look like it does. Yeah, because he rips it out of that guy and eats it. Kalima! (laughs) (laughs) Oh, wait, wrong movie. That's Temple of Doom. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Whoops. (laughs) All right, Mike. Well, I don't have anything else. I've talked way too much, uh, uh, especially about uh, things I didn't need to, but it's okay. That's what we do here at the Real Film Nerds Podcast is we try to have fun and be informative, but mostly have fun. So, uh, Mike, do your thing. All right. Well, thanks for listening, everybody. Make sure to enter our contest. Um, uh, Just email uh, Mike at Real Film Nerds. Uh, The Ben Foster movie or, you know, I don't don't know. Literally anything. Just yeah. email Mike. Yeah, yeah. Literally anything. Just in, in quotes, literally anything. Anyway, um, and make sure to follow us on socials, uh, Instagram, Twitter, or X, uh, and Facebook. And thanks for listening, everybody. Catch you on the next pod. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now go out and catch a movie.
Hi, everyone. This is Ma Henshaw Loses Her Cookies. Episode 57, Roadhouse. Howdy, Matt. How are you doing tonight? Now, Mother, are you talking in your Western Southern uh, cowboy draw because Roadhouse is very similar to a Western? That Roadhouse is not similar to a Western. The story of the film is very similar to a Western. Well, it's a lone yeah. gun. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Let me explain. Okay. It's the lone rider coming to town. Well, All the townspeople need help, right? Mm-hmm. He's there to save the town. That's a Western. Okay, but he's in Florida. Wait a minute. <laughs> and actually, he's not in Florida. Mike and I looked it up after <gasps> our we recorded our podcast. Um, they filmed this in the Dominican Republic. How depressing is that? Oh, come on. They didn't even f- film it in Florida. Uh, you know, that is one thing uh, that I had uh, negatorily about this movie was I said, uh, that really didn't look like the Florida Keys kind of thing when and when they went off on the boat, you know, and, and yeah, it was pretty scenery and everything. But I was even questioning, does that really look like the Florida Keys? And they, it wasn't, aha, uh-huh. now I know. You know, what I, you know what I'm wondering? What? Is it so late at night that you're making up words? What's negatorily? I make up words all the time. You didn't know that? <laughs> Welcome to Ma Hinchaisms. I'm creative in that respect. You are creative, Ma. Okay, so I think the real pressing question here that your audience wants to know. <laughs> you ready for this? Are you sitting down? I'm sitting down so far. Okay, are you going to let me ask it or are you going to keep talking over me? She's shaking uh, her head no. Here's okay. the question. Who has the better abs? Jake Gyllenhaal or Patrick Swayze? Oh, don't even go there. Hands down, Patrick. I Patrick was just the better actor in my view. Oh, Jake, I don't want to make you feel bad. But when, uh, okay, say uh, Jake was in the bar and there was a bad guy and he wanted to beat the guy up and what... He didn't even sound real mean, but when Patrick Swayze, there was a bad guy, he sounded mean. And really, and I sat there and I thought about what is the difference there? Jake just did not sound tough. And I think Patrick Swayze had better muscles, but that's just my view. Okay. Wow. That went well, off on a lot longer tangent than I thought you were going to go. I'm proud of you. I mean, I, I thought, you know, you cannot redo. And I actually, when I, when I Googled Roadhouse, I got a cut of the old Roadhouse. And Patrick was, I mean, he would just be vicious when he was trying to get the guys out of the bar, you know. And Jake just didn't have that up. Not well. Not that could be attributed to the directing. Okay. Maybe that's not what the director wanted. Maybe I'm not, not making excuses. I'm just saying it's a possibility. Yeah. And I don't remember in the first movie of, and it's probably because I'm old and I didn't. I. I don't know how long ago I saw it. That was going to be one of my questions is when was the last time you watched the original? Oh God, I don't even remember. Um, Um, If you're curious and I know you have time, uh the original is on Amazon. You can watch it. Oh, okay. But the thing is, uh, Jake comes in and says, where's the nearest hospital? And that one kind of got me because I don't remember that in the first movie. No, no, no. He was just trying to say that that was when he was fighting all those guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was just trying to say um, he knew he was going to hurt them and he wanted to make sure they were taken care of medically. 
was that an intimidation thing? He was speaking softly. Yeah. yeah it, I think it was just a different imagining of the character, and I think it was the director. I don't think it was Jake Gyllenhaal. Really different. Well, yeah, and yeah, that I guess that's true because I mean Jake is a very good actor. Yes. But the the it just didn't have that uh snarly vicious effect that you know Patrick Swayze just really did have. And I you know, that's I shouldn't compare, but I did. So there so I- I did this with Mike in my podcast. Can you name the film that Jake Gyllenhaal and Patrick Swayze were in together? Nope. It's one of my nope. favorite films of all time. No way. What? Donnie Darko. Gee, I don't even remember when I saw that. I probably saw it, but I don't remember. No, uh, you probably didn't. It really didn't come out in many theaters. It kind of got shoved underneath the rug. Oh. Oh, but uh, that was one of Jake Gyllenhaal's very first films. Him and his sister were in it, and so was Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze was a motivational speaker for kids, and you find out later on in the film, to spo- not to completely spoil Donnie Darko, but uh, he has uh, kitty porn, and he's molesting children. Oh, for And he's him. this motivational speaker for children, yeah. Oh, my heavens. No, I never saw that. Never yeah, it's, a, it's a really interesting mind trip of a film i really like it but anyways yeah that's a little tidbit of information that jake Hall and patrick swayze were in a film together at the start of jake's career and i'm sure he watched roadhouse probably a hundred thousand times over he was starstruck when he was in the film with patrick swayze obviously oh yeah but he talked about it a little bit on his press tour on this go around but oh. uh Oh. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I really, I mean, this movie was not great. The thing that, that bugged me about it is the director is Doug Lyman. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you know the movies that Doug Lyman has done. No. 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 Uh, have you ever heard of a little film called Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Oh, that one? Yes, I have. He directed, and it was not too he long. directed Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Oh, okay. Did you ever watch the film Edge of Tomorrow? Nope. Tom Cruise? Nope. The action movie where they travel back in time? Nope. Never saw it. Okay. That movie was fantastic. He directed that one, too. Mm. Uh, Did you ever watch the film The Bourne Identity? Nope. From 2002, one of the movies that they credit with giving this resurgence of uh, action films. Incredible film. Mm Mm-mm. Uh, what about American Made, another Tom Cruise movie? Mm-mm. Okay, well, shit, you're ruining my point. My point was, <laughs> he did all these wonderful films that I really like. Mr. And Smith, Mr. and Mrs. Smith is wonderful. He directed Swingers back in 1996. You know, that's not a great movie. I enjoy it because of, you know, it was the start of John Favreau and uh, Vince Vaughn in the movie industry. But he directed that. I like that. But Born Identity broke the mold. It was an incredible film. Gotten, I'm pretty sure got nominated. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, what a wonderful, fun, unique action film. Mm-hmm. You've got Edge of Tomorrow, another really well done, really interesting, unique action time travel film. You And then you get American Made, not an incredible film, but a really good film based on true life, Tom Cruise, drug smuggler, airplane, all kinds of stuff. Very well done. Tom Cruise flew the planes, did all this stuff in there. Great film. And then you get this and this movie is not good. And he has all these big, great hits. I I don't know if he was just doing this for a paycheck or if he just didn't care because it just, it was not great. I felt sad because I fell asleep little short naps, probably three times the beginning part of the movie. I I did. It was just dull. I I mean, you know what I mean? I'm a little bit and then uh, wake up again. And it just didn't have the oomph. And then when at the end, another thing that got me was the end, the big fight where he takes care of everybody and, you know, beats the crap out of them all and everything. 
was too long. It just went on and on and on. And you knew he was going to win and everybody get beaten up and whatever, whatever. But it was just so long. And I'm like, oh, there's that's enough already. That was my view. Okay. There well, you that's go. fine. That's why you have this podcast, Ma Hinshaw. I mean, some people that we all know and love didn't even get through half an hour of the movie. I made it through the whole movie, but like I say, I did. I I had a few snoozes because you know, it just wasn't that interesting at first. So anyway, there I am. Okay. So you've heard it here, folks. Um, Ma Hinshaw did not find this film interesting even though there is a copious amount of male nudity. Well, yeah, but, you know. <laughs> okay, so out of all the, the shirtless men, all the lovely rock-hard abs you saw for this two-hour-long film, mm-hmm. which one was your favorite? Oh, shoot. Was it Conor McGregor? Because you saw his butt, too? Nah. Wow. That wasn't the greatest butt I've ever seen. Um, I was. No, oh, probably. oh, that begs another question. Then what is the greatest butt you've ever seen? Oh, cut it out! I'm not gonna say. Jason Mimosa. Well, yeah, there's one. Anyway, <laughs> hey, you know. Yes, mom. Uh, I know you love your Aquaman. I uh, look. You know, I I. Um, an artist or was and did a lot of life drawings too of live people and I have certain uh, requirements of botoxes and so what that's it you know so what you're saying is you've seen a lot of butts yeah with or without pornography you have you've seen a lot of butts (laughs) yeah I have uh, so but anyway do you know you do know this goes on the internet for everyone and anyone to listen to right okay i'm going to be very embarrassed but hey look i had to take live drawing i i to get my degree come on yes folks. mom but you didn't have to intentionally fail it seven times <laughs> i didn't fail it i got straight a's there you go oh anyway. so that's worse so you really <laughs> paid attention to during live drawing then oh yeah yeah I paid attention all right you got anyway. every mole, every wrinkle, every freckle mm. just right. No, no, I didn't put in moles and freckles. I was kind. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> or wrinkle for that matter. So anyway, yeah. Did, did, you, you, uh, did you embellish like if a man was like, you know, like a, a, a pinky finger? Did you draw him like an index finger just to be kind in your drawing? Uh. Well, back in that day, we had, you know, more decency rules. They had to wear a um, something over that there. <laughs> they had to wear a something over that there? <laughs> well, they were, they were, wearing, they, were they wearing mankinis? Yes, and other stuff that I they invented. <laughs> <laughs> they invented? Yes. And it didn't become a fashion trend? No, no, not a bit. <laughs> probably very uncomfortable for some folk. See, but your life I, drawing class at the same college that I went to and my life drawing class were clearly very different because they were full on nude in mine. No. Oh, heck, I should have gone to school later. No, that's all right. But yeah, yeah, we had our decency requirements in that there when I, I mean, was in school. Seriously, yeah. they were full on nude in my classes and They were not the people you wanted to see nude. Oh, I understand that. I had one guy, I think he was probably 80. And then I had another fellow that was terribly rotund. But I did a good job of drawing him, so he liked it. He thought it was good. So you're good at drawing circles? Oh, stop that. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway. Okay, all right, fine. I'll stop with the silliness. Ma, how many cookies now what kind of cookies are you giving uh roadhouse what kind of cookies are there are they pumpkin cookies are they bloody cookies 
Are they uh, cocaine-filled cookies? Like, what cookies did you make for Roadhouse? Uh, how about M M&M and M cookies? M <laughs> M&M and M cookies. Yeah. Hey, you didn't know people put M M&M and Ms in their cookies sometimes. I do. I I like M M&M and M cookies. I just don't understand why that's what you're using for. I Roadhouse. Like it. It's what I'm using, and I'll stick to it. Okay, well, Ma Hinshaw of the infamous Ma Hinshaw in Prescott, Arizona, even though she lives not in Prescott, Arizona, how many M&M cookies do you give Roadhouse 2024? I'm going to give it uh, two and a half. Two and a half M&M cookies. How dare you? I don't know. I, I wavered between two and a half and three, but I don't. I could not. No, two and a half. Very, I thought you didn't like this movie. A two and a half is at least on the spectrum of not liking it. Well, there you go. So, and, as you heard earlier in this podcast, I gave it a two and a half, and Mysterious Mike Talent gave it three. Gee, he liked it better, huh? Hmm. Uh, he tore it apart. I was shocked he gave it such a high rating. I was expecting him to give it a one or a one and a half, and he didn't. Oh, really? Yeah, he tore it apart worse than I did. Really? Oh, Oh, yeah. He really was not a big fan of this movie at all. Well, I'm not a fan of it either, and I'm sorry, Jake. I I love you dearly, but... I just don't know how you can't be a fan with so much male nudity. I, I just don't get it. I mean, that's what you live for, Ma. You don't have many things in this life to live for, and I know that is one of yours. Well, at my age, I don't see many uh, six-pack ab people around, but that didn't make me think that the acting was any better. I mean, come Mom, on. Mom, Mom, let's go back to that. You don't see many six-pack ab people around at your age. Mom, that's, you know what the problem is? It's just called, that's just called Americans, okay? We don't have six-pack abs anymore. Okay. <laughs> Called That's McDonald's, true. Water Burger, and Krispy Kreme. Right. Oh, yummy. Okay. See? No. Mm-mm. Anyways. Okay. okay. You need to go to bed because it is now officially Wednesday, and this podcast will be out in seven hours. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Ma. Yeah. What movie are we talking about next week? I don't know. Oh, you don't yeah. know. Wait. No, I do. It's Monkey Man. Yeah, you're the one that wanted to watch it. Me? Yeah. I never heard of it. What do you mean I wanted to watch it? Well, you wanted to go to the theaters, and it's an action movie starring Dev Patel. Monkey Man. Okay. Okay. I will go see it. Well, I'm going to see it Thursday if I live that long. Okay? I hope you live that long because it's already Wednesday. So if you die between now and tomorrow, I'm going to have a real problem. Okay. And you can't let Barry Barb down. Oh, no, no. I don't want to let Barry down. He's my favorite guy. I mean, you have to keep going for Barry. Oh, okay. I'll try very hard. All right. Anything else you want to add? Are you done? I'm done. You're sure? Done in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because, yeah, I'd like to go to bed eventually, too. Anyways, all right. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in and listening to another Rock Hard Ab episode of Ma Hinshaw Loses Her M&M Cookies. Next week, chatting Monkey Man. Go check it out in the theaters. Maybe not watch Roadhouse. Maybe do. I don't know. It wasn't a great film. Anyways, thanks again, everyone, for listening, and we will chat with you next week. Bye.